G'day everyone, and welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to be talking about gear oils and how different gear oils can affect the efficiency of a gearbox. In order to talk about the efficiency of different kinds of lubricants, it's probably helpful if we first begin with how do we lose energy in the operation of a gearbox? So in an ideal scenario, we want a certain input torque to be converted into a certain output torque with no power loss across the gears. Obviously in a real world scenario, there are various ways that we can lose energy. So as an example, we've got seal drag, right? So literally the drag on the seals. We've got churn. So that's moving lubricant around the gearbox casing. So most of these gearboxes are, are typically splash lubricated. So that means, you know, moving the, uh, the lubricant around kind of the volume. You've also got windage. Funny term, literally just means moving the air internally in the gearbox. And then you've got circulation. So I mentioned that most gearboxes are probably splash lubricated, but in some instances you may have lubricant applicators uh, or pumps within there to, uh, let's say, squirt uh, lubricant at a very specific location. As a result, we have to do work to move that lubricant around. On the other side, we also have the physical interaction of the gear teeth. So that's the gear mesh. We lose energy there. And we also lose energy in the bearings. So... For example, if the shafts are running on rolling element bearings, then we have the physical movement between, let's say, the rolling elements and the inner or outer race. Now, we separate these two into what is effectively speed-dependent and load-dependent losses. Now, the speed-dependent ones we can think of as being churn and circulation, which are related to the viscosity so the parts which are relevant to lubrication are churn and circulation. And as you can imagine, the higher the viscosity of the lubricant, the more energy I need to put in to move it around the gearbox case. So lower viscosity means that lower energy loss, higher viscosity means higher energy loss, because that's all work that we're putting in to move fluid around the gearbox that's not contributing to conversion of torque from one gear to the other. Now for the load dependent ones, we really need to investigate what happens at the gear mesh. So what happens at the interaction between those gear teeth? And this comes down to something which we call the traction coefficient. So if you can imagine two surfaces that are trying to slide past each other, right? Let's say that they're gear teeth, for example. What actually separates the gear teeth is a volume of lubricant. Now that lubricant has to get forced through a really narrow gap. So it's supporting the load. And as it's forced through this really narrow gap, you can think of all the different molecules in the base oil trying to squeeze through that gap. And there's gonna be a, some kind of pressure profile. So as the, as the gap gets narrower and narrower, the pressure and therefore the viscosity of the fluid is going to increase. Now, if there are any surface disparities, which there always are in machine surfaces, that's going to cause a even further restriction, and I'm going to exaggerate it here, but it's going to cause even further peaks in that pressure and viscosity relationship. Now, as they try and squeeze through that gap, these lubricants are going to get forced together. And in a typical, let's say, mineral oil where you have uh, a range of different molecule molecular shapes and sizes, their capacity to slide past each other, that is effectively the traction coefficient. It's almost like a, a measure of the internal friction of the lubricant. What we want is an ideal scenario in which most of the molecules are the same shape and the same size, because this will allow them to slide past each other really easily. And that's one of the main advantages of a synthetic lubricant, uh, where we have a high degree of control over the molecular structure. All right, so going back to our model where we have viscosity dependent or speed dependent losses, 
We also have the load dependent losses, which we might think of as being traction coefficient dependent. So that is the gear mesh and the bearings. Now, it, the effect of this differs by gear type. So spur gears are very efficient in the base case. They're about 99% efficient uh, for each mesh. So if we had, let's say, a three-speed reduction gearbox, we would expect to lose about 1% energy for each reduction. Uh, Belve gears are um, also reasonably efficient in the base case, um, as are helical gears. Now, I realize that that's not quite a picture, picture of a helical, helical gear. Um, I couldn't quite find one. I know that's a hypoid. Um, but these are all in sort of the high 90s in terms of efficiency. Worm gears, on the other hand, are typically 70 to 80% efficient. And this is largely because the sliding contact of a worm gear is much more exaggerated than it is with a spur gear. So in a spur, there's really, um, you know, a little bit of sliding, but you think of the pitch line, it's largely a rolling contact. Whereas with worm gears, there's a lot more sliding. So we get a lot more, if you like, bang for our buck, if we were to switch to a synthetic lubricant in a worm gear application. All right, so how do we improve energy efficiency? Well, really, we only have two levers. The first is to reduce the viscosity of the lubricant. Now, higher VI lubricants can actually support more load at lower viscosities. So as an example, if you were using a standard mineral 320 weight gear oil, often you might be able to reduce that down to a 220 weight by going to, a, let's say, for example, a synthetic PAO because a lot of the synthetic oils are able to carry more load at lower standard viscosities. The other way that you can do it is to reduce the traction coefficient. And again, this means a move to a synthetic lubricant. It could be a standard PAO, or if it's gonna work for you, um, polyalkylene glycols have extremely low traction coefficients. And that's why they're very commonly used in uh, worm gear applications. So the last question is, can we actually measure that improvement in the real world? And the answer is yes. The first way, which is the most accurate, is to set up a measurement of both the input and the output torque directly via some kind of strain gauge system. So there are many torque analyzers available on the market, but they are quite expensive and it does take a long time to set up. So the way that you could set up an experiment would kind of be in an ABAB test where you would let's say run the, uh, the gearbox on a mineral oil, then drain it, fill it with a synthetic oil, measure the input and output torque again, do it for a mineral and then do it for a synthetic and then compare the two uh, circumstances. So that's the first way, but reasonably intensive. The second way is just to look at an infrared thermal image. So if you took an infrared camera and took an image of let's say the gearbox outer casing, um, if it were running at, let's say, 80 degrees Celsius on a mineral oil, and then you were to switch it out for a synthetic, often you'll see a difference of maybe anywhere between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius. Um, that's pretty typical. And so that drop in temperature is reflective of less waste heat being generated. So it's not going to give you a, a relative measure of the efficiency, but you can confirm that there is some kind of energy efficiency benefit. The last way is to look at the power in for a constant output load. So as an example, if the gearbox is being driven by an electric motor, we could measure the current being drawn by the electric motor for a fixed output power. Um, so with a synthetic lubricant, you would expect or um, a lower input current for a fixed output torque. So these are the ways that we can uh, physically confirm that a lower traction lubricant or a lower viscosity lubricant is in fact giving us energy efficiency savings. I hope this explanation has been reasonably helpful. I know it's pretty fast, but this has been Lubrication Explained.